mucor mycosis is the topic and mucor mycosis is a devastating fungal infection that can occur most commonly in patients that are immunosuppressed or patients that have uncontrolled diabetes. Those are the two most common patient groups that will develop this rather serious fungal infection. And the names of the fungal species are as follows. There's Rhizopus, there's Rhizomucor, and then there's Mucor. And the most common are caused by the first two, and they cause a type of Mucor mycosis that's known as rhino cerebral. And the reason it's called rhino cerebral is because the rhino is referring to the fact that it involves the nasal passages the nasal passages and also the sinuses and the cerebral part of course is referring to the fact that rhinocerebral mucormycosis also involves the brain now what kind of symptoms are we going to see in someone with mucormycosis in particular rhinocerebral well what's happening is that these fungal organisms are entering the vascular space and once they do that they basically can cause tissue necrosis they can literally eat up all the tissue of all the structures such as the orbit of the eye the sinuses the nasal septum and also the palate and this is pretty devastating destruction because this leads to uh, basically these fungal organisms destroying the entire area uh, around the eye and nasal area as well. And if you were to just look at a picture of it online, you would see some pretty horrific uh, pictures, something like this entire area is basically gone. There's a big hole there that had to be surgically patched up. So it's pretty devastating. Now in terms of actual symptomatology, a um, person can have vision problems because of the effects. Um, the person can also develop pretty severe fever, headache. Um, also in addition, to the most obvious uh, consequences. You can also develop bloody nasal discharge. And that's never, and never uh, something to be taken lightly. And proptosis is also common. Proptosis is where the eye bulges outward. And this can progress and spread to the brain and cause uh, CNS uh, dysfunction. It can also progress to the lung and it can also progress to the ophthalmic artery. And if that happens, then that can lead to blindness because the ophthalmic artery is, of course, involved in the circulation of the eye. So, how do we diagnose this? Well, a lot of it is clinical suspicion combined with the symptomatology. So you have an uncontrolled diabetic, for example, or someone who has some sort of immunocompromise, immunosuppression, and they develop these types of symptoms, you have to isolate the organism. And you do that by essentially taking a piece of the tissue. So you have to do a biopsy and then take the affected tissue and put it on a wet mount. and examine that under a microscope and you, when you do you'll see these fungal organisms that essentially are hyphae and they appear 
like that. So there'll actually be these hyphae that are branching, but branching at very interesting 90 degree angles. So that's the characteristic finding. Other tests that are involved include a sputum culture, if there's lung involvement, and also CT or X-ray uh, of the head to identify any other bony destruction that can be present because of the mucormycosis. And in terms of treatment, treatment, the first thing, of course, you have to do is control the underlying condition. For example, what is the reason this person's uh, developed uh, mucormycosis? So if, if, for example, if it's diabetes, you need to control their diabetes. That's a very important first step. In terms of medication, there's an IV medication known as amphotericin. That is the cornerstone of the treatment. Amphotericin B is the name of the drug. And then finally, this has to be surgically debrided. All the dead tissue has to be removed. All that necrotic tissue has to be surgically debrided. So those are the cornerstones of treatment. Now let's take a look at a few vignettes. Patient is seen by a specialist because of chronic intractable sinusitis. The decision is made to treat the patient surgically with evacuation of sinus contents and dilation of the sinus ostia. The material removed is sent for routine pathological examination. An unexpected finding is present uh, with fungi with broad, non-septate, irregularly shaped hyphae. Subsequent review of the patient's chart reveals a long history of poorly controlled diabetes. Which of the following is most likely causative organism? Well, you have all of the pictures in one small clinical vignette. And of these, if you remember, the name of the fungal species is Rhizopus. Next question. 68-year-old diabetic man comes to the office because of double vision and fever. He says that this all started about three weeks ago with a dull pain over his cheeks and low-grade fever and thin, bloody nasal discharge. He says that he has not been feeling great since his wife passed away four months ago and has not been very good at checking his sugars because that used to be his wife's job. He seems very sad and a bit confused. Temperature is 102, blood pressure is normal, pulse is normal, respirations are 20. Physical exam shows proptosis and a reduction of movement of his left eye and inflamed left cheek and dusky red nasal turbinates on left side blood glucose is 269 most correct statement about this condition is well again you've got a poorly controlled diabetic with some pretty pretty severe uh, physical exam findings such as bloody discharge I would suspect mucormycosis so if that is true then which one of these would be true well the one that's true in this case is C infection or invasion of the ophthalmic artery is what's responsible for his visual signs and if not treated it could lead to blindness and finally the last one 29 year old woman comes to the emergency department with her mother because she cannot see out of her right eye a few weeks ago she began having double vision and nasal congestion and attributed to her drug abuse but the symptoms have been getting progressively worse mother tells you that the daughter is a poorly controlled diabetic with a heroin problem and that she has been in and out of rehab centers for years she does not monitor her glucose levels and admits to forgetting to use her insulin when she is high which is most of the time temperature is 102 blood pressure is 110 pulse is 75 respirations are 17 physical exam shows proptosis of the right eye and thin bloody nasal discharge and an area of necrosis of the right side of the hard palate that does not cross the midline CT shows a pacification of the frontal sinus carotid arteriography shows obstruction of the carotid siphon most appropriate next step is well you got a poorly controlled diabetic she's using heroin she might have who knows she might be HIV positive although there's nothing to say that for sure but there is definitely those underlying conditions she's presenting with all the symptomatology that you see with mucormycosis so what they're really saying is, how do we proceed? Blood culture is unfortunately not part of the, uh, it's not that easy. 
Uh, sputum culture, only if there's lung involvement. There's nothing really in the clinical vignette that says there's any lung involvement. Lumbar puncture is not part of the diagnostic workup of mucormycosis. Perform a wet mount smear of crushed tissue obtained by biopsy. Yes, absolutely. And last one, schedule the patient for immediate surgery. Not yet. You need to get a diagnosis first. If the diagnosis is indeed mucormycosis, then definitely surgical deprivement of the necrotic tissue would be part of the treatment plan.